some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello and welcome back to the channel, everybody. In today's video, we find ourselves in the courtroom of Judge Middleton once again, where we encounter a soft tard who uh, apparently uh, had a fraudulent passport and uh, driver's license. And not just any other driver's license, but an international driver's license, which, believe it or not, still requires you to have a driver's license from your state of origin. But, of course, this soft tart can't figure that out. At any rate, let's go to sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Good morning, sir. Hello. Here. Kirk Edwin Jensen. Yes. Uh, you got a ticket for no valid operator's license. No license in possession. And I don't think you can actually be convicted of both of those. It's either or. And no proof of insurance. Uh, Mr. Marvin said he spoke with you. You don't wish to enter a plea of guilty, which is your right but you don't wish me to appoint an attorney. Ah, yes, we've got quite a law scholar on our hands to the point where he wants to go pro se. I wonder how that will eventually work out for him. Um, can we just set this for a bench trial? Or have a, it's either that or a jury trial, is that what you're saying? Yes. Uh, you have a right to have a, well, let me ask you this. Uh, you don't want a, me to appoint an attorney. Do you wish to hire one? No, I, I, I really don't even want to contract with the Crown Corporation here. Uh, you don't want to contract with the corporation around here, dude? Well, to put it bluntly, uh, you're not contracting with the corporation. You're dealing with uh, a lawful authority, you dumbass. Um, this has really turned into a, a religious persecution issue uh, because, uh, and I'm sure you can see, I canceled canceled that driver's license 13 years ago because I didn't want to have that contract any longer. So how does this equate to a religious persecution? I mean, uh, I've always seen the sovereign citizen movement as more political than anything else going against uh, conventional authority, but I've never seen them as a religion because the question would become what philosophy do you adhere to and what kind of deity do you worship? I mean, that's basically a religion right there. So you're not being religiously persecuted because a, the sovereign citizen movement isn't exactly a religion. It's more, yeah, you know, like I said before, before more of a political thing and i wanted to get out of that system and be completely separate so i went with a different government altogether with a different uh issuing authority and i have documentation in the form of an international driving permit uh, which mr marvin acknowledged he is aware of um because he said he used to have one so he knows about them, and that's what I had when I presented it to the officer. For, for whatever reason, the officer thinks uh, it's not valid or that it's fraudulent. Well, the thing is, dude, uh, you done screwed up when you uh, decided to forego your previous license because in the United States you are required to have a driver's license from your state of origin before you can get that other driver's license so it's most likely that you now have a fraudulent license from probably most likely a soft hard website so that's probably why they took it from you um and that is his choice to to decide that but um it, the the charge of not having any driver's license on me is not true because I did have it on me. Do you I have it with you today? No, he has it. Who has it? The officer, Officer Brooks, who took it from me. Um, I have, 
I have a uh, an international driving permit and a, a passport that was that was issued by a different governing authority than the United States. And for whatever reason, they're choosing not to acknowledge it. Um, but it already has been. Uh, well, that's an interesting defense. Now, we've been struggling with international driver's licenses. And uh, for one issue, you have to be in the country legally. So we've got a number of Mexican people that have Mexican driver's license from Michoacan mm -hmm. or Jalisco or one of the Mexican states. But if they're not here legally, it doesn't even it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. You're obviously here legally. You were born a citizen. You may have. I, you know, I have changed my nationality is what I've done. Where's now. your passport from? It's issued by the government of the United States of America. It's it's not a blue passport. Uh, it's a different colored passport than that. Um, Mr. Marvin says that there's no such thing as that, and that's fine if he wants to choose to do that. Um, but I have had no issue. I have had no issue from anyone uh, or any anything using that. Um, I granted I have not gone to the country with that yet. I have not had the means to do yeah, so. Yeah, good luck. So in other words, you have another fraudulent document in the form of what's supposed to be a passport. Man, you are not exactly firing on all cylinders at this point, are you, buddy? But you go on, way, good luck trying to get back in. My right. advice is don't do that. Mm -hmm. You'll be a man with no country. So well, don't I, leave the country, but you're here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, like I said, I, I have, I according to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, uh, I have a right to change my nationality. And uh, the Crown Corporation here is trying to deny me that nationality, uh, which really falls under a religious persecution issue here, because uh, I don't want to have any, any more dealings uh, with the Crown Corporation. And um, so... I don't know what universe you're from, but there is no Crown Corporation. This is the state of Michigan. And in the state of Michigan, you have to have a driver's license. So you may have one. Uh, your operator's license, you're right, is canceled. I don't know if I've ever seen that. I, I cut it up and I sent it back to the Secretary of State 13 years ago. I did not want to have that contract any longer. But you got convicted in Niles in 2019 of no ops. Uh, you failed to appear. I did faulted you, I guess. Um, but yeah, they've got your old driver's license picture in here. But yeah, you you don't have a bad driving record. There's no speeding, seatbelt. I'm no not. A, yeah, driving. I'm not a. I'm not a bad guy. I. I don't. I. I just oh, want yeah, to get you around were here, differently. You were than, here on May 11th. Mm -hmm, correct. And you wanted the, the complaint dismissed. You told me that you had an in license canceled and lien. So I set up for the pretrial, which mm -hmm. is what we just did. All right. Now I got a concern that the officer has your license. Yeah, he still has it. He's he. He doesn't, I don't know why he hasn't given it back to me yet. Well, I can't, I want to see it. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So Mr. Marvin says he's not, we haven't reached a settlement. Uh, you believe you have a defense. Um, you don't want to have an attorney. So the question becomes, we set it for a trial. And... Uh, do we set it for a trial in front of the judge or do you wish to have a jury come in and hear this? I want to just plain have it settled and whether it's with him and you. Well, I don't have the authority to settle it. He does. Mm -hmm. I can set it for what's called a last pretrial before, before a jury trial. And I will get your international. This may be more of a legal issue than a factual issue. Mm -hmm. A, you were driving. Mm -hmm in the state of Michigan, and you don't have a Michigan driver's license. Oh, the other, but but okay. you may have a valid international license. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Right. There's no 
Now, the prosecutor has the police report. I don't. The other thing that I forget, I failed to mention was that I was also under contract uh, while I was driving that. I was under a legal contract. Um, and obviously that contract was impaired while I was trying to do, while I was trying to uh, fulfill the, the obligations of that contract. That's alternate universe stuff. Uh, there's no contract. The issue no, is, I, I mean, the the owner of the vehicle, I had a contract with the owner of the vehicle. I was under contract to do some, perform some uh, services for the owner of the vehicle. Oh, okay. So, all right. That that may be so. Right. But then you may need a CDL to oh, do that. Your Honor? Yes? I'm, I'm not sure. I haven't looked at that statute in like years, but um, doesn't an international license have to have a prerequisite of a valid license from some place before you can apply for that um, national well license? and i yeah. had a national one too as well so i don't know I believe uh, we, that's we've been but I don't all right know well it may be wrong. but we've got a legal issue and yeah. i i don't even he's got a I theory understand. that may have no basis or may have some basis we have recently had a man from india mm -hmm. who tried to do everything right right i remember him. um and it's so cumbersome and difficult. Mm -hmm. And he really had, he was living here. He had a driver's license from India. He got an international driver's license. Or he had a New York license and somewhere he forgot to dot an I or cross a T. All right, I'm gonna set this for a last pretrial, but I need- and What does that mean? It means we're gonna take one more effort at resolving this thing, but okay. I need to see your evidence. Okay. Well, the I can tell you the the officer, Officer Brooks, he's the one that has it. All right. <clears throat> An attorney could help you with the legal issues on this. You don't wish to have. No, I, I have other representation. And I can't wait to hear what, what kind of representation you have, because so far you haven't been making all the best decisions, have you? <clears throat> All right, let's assume for the minute that your argument has got some merit that you've got a, some passport and an international driver's license, that maybe that's enough, but it usually presumes that you have a valid license somewhere else. Mm -hmm. um, so they didn't take your passport too, did they? Mm -hmm. Took your passport and... Mm -hmm. Deputy Brooks. Court needs to see those. All right, I'm going to set this for last pretrial two weeks from now for June 29th. At three o'clock. Does that interfere with your work schedule? No, I'm I'm self-employed. Okay. That's a Thursday. Three p.m.
they charge this on the ticket. You're also alleged to have no proof of insurance, which is a civil infraction. The, the insurance was was there it was not on the car in right. the car at the time all right the uh a simple phone call to the insurance agency will prove that it was right. in existence. well there's two different kinds of offenses one is not having insurance that's a one-year misdemeanor carries a minimum 200 dollar fine the other one is not having the slip in mm -hmm. the car right so if you can prove that the so that's what the charge is it isn't that you didn't have an insurance yeah. you didn't have it in the car no yeah. so if you got it bring with you your proof of insurance right. for that date. Right. All right, we'll try another shot at this. When you were here at your arraignment in May, you were very polite and respectful, and we don't agree on things, but let's take a closer look before I jump to any conclusions. And I'll have a lot more evidence at that, right. that time. Yeah. Um, and if it can be resolved, great. If it can't be, the question at that point will be, do we have a jury trial or do we have a bench trial? And one of the things about people like you that want to check out of our government and our system, they don't mind bringing in 30 of their fellow citizens to come in and hear their thing. The irony is, if I sent you a jury notice, you wouldn't show up. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much a sovereign citizen in a nutshell right there. I mean, uh, they, want, they don't respect the laws, but they want you to respect their sovereignty or whatever the hell they want to call it. A little longer than a few minutes later. And, um, this, and I understand that there's nefarious people who want to do things for nefarious purposes, and that's not me. I, I don't want to do anything for nefarious or evil purposes. I'm trying to be upright and righteous here in what I'm doing. And, I, and I'm just simply wanting to be separate uh, according to my religious beliefs. And that's, and that's all this really boils down to. I mean, you still haven't exactly uh, defined why the sovereign citizen movement is a religion rather than a political or uh, any other type of movement. Because I don't see any uh, philosophy behind it besides that that would indicate uh, worship of a deity or anything like that. I mean, it's like I said, seems more political than anything else. All right. Well, one option is don't drive a car. If you don't want to participate in it and you want to opt out of our system, you don't want to let, don't drive. Have somebody else drive you or stay in one place. But if you want to use our public roadways and share the road with other people that are licensed, you can't just decide I live in an alternate universe and I don't have to obey the same rules that everybody else does. So one option is don't drive. Well, Judge, that's easier said than done because a lot of uh, sovereign citizens don't see it as driving. They see it as traveling. Uh because you know what, semantic word games and all that, but I'm sure you already know that. And then you won't have to worry about it, but we'll see what we can figure out. We'll take another crack at this June 29th at 3 p.m. here, and I'll get those documents. If you have proof of insurance, bring it with you. Okay. All right, I'll see you then. Okay. Thank you. Well, okay, June 29th, I will mark that on my calendar because I want to see how fraudulent those documents are as well because, you know what, given everything that was presented, I think that, well, he went to Softard Guru and got all the documents forged. But that's just my opinion based upon what I've seen in the past with other sovereign citizens. At any rate, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one.